Given that p and q are integers such that p, q is even, use algebra to prove by contradiction that at least one of p or q is even. All right, so first thing, we get our assumption if we're doing proof by contradiction. And the negation for this statement would be if p, q is even, if p and q are integers, then neither p nor q is even, or both p and q are odd. So this is saying here, what we're trying to prove is that at least one of p or q is even. So either p is even, or q is even, or p and q are even. The negation of that, the opposite of that, will be that neither p or q are even, so they're both odd. And just stating at the end that both p and q are integers. Okay, so p and q are odd. We're starting with that. So then we can say, let p equal to, let's say, 2a plus 1, and let's say q is equal to 2b plus 1, where both a and b are integers. So these are ways in which we can express odd numbers. So we can then multiply the two things together. pq is then 2a plus 1 times 2b plus 1. Let's expand this out. We end up with 4ab plus 2a plus 2b plus 1, which we can rewrite as, if I take out 2 from the first three terms, 2ab plus a plus b plus 1, and the 2 multiplied by the 2ab plus a plus b, so the first bit basically, this is even. And then if you add 1, this then makes it odd. And that contradicts our assumption. Our assumption is that pq is even, but we've just found that pq is odd. So there's our contradiction, so therefore this statement doesn't work. So if pq is even, that means that at least one of p and q must be even. They can't both be odd. Okay, so then on to part two. Given that x and y are integers such that x is less than zero, x plus y squared is less than 9x squared plus y squared, show that y is bigger than 4x. Okay, so let's just write that down. So x, we're told, is less than zero, so it's negative in other words. And then x plus y squared is less than 9x squared plus y squared. So let's just play around with this statement that we have here. Let's just expand this out. We end up with x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is less than 9x squared plus y squared. And then I'll take away x squared from both sides and I'll cancel out these two y squares as well. So take away x squared, take away y squared from both sides. We end up with 2xy is less than 8x squared. So again, just cancel these two out, brought this x squared to the other side. I'll bring the 2xy now to the right, so we get 0 is less than 8x squared minus 2xy, which I'll just rewrite as 8x squared minus 2xy is bigger than 0, so just changing the order. I can then divide everything by 2, and then I can factorize out x. And we are told in the beginning that x is less than 0, so x is negative. If you divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, if I divided both sides of this inequality by x, that changes the direction of the inequality. So the rule is, whenever you divide or multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you have to change the direction of the inequality symbol. So this then becomes 4x minus y is less than zero. So again, here I have divided both sides by x, which is a negative number. If that rule doesn't make sense, or if you don't really know why that is the case, you just kind of accepted it. Let's have a quick look at an example. So let's say that five, well, let's just consider this. Five is bigger than three. So you know that to be true. If I times both sides by minus one, and I just multiply the numbers by minus one, I don't worry about the direction of the inequality. I end up with minus five is bigger than minus three. And this is not correct. Minus 5 is smaller than minus 3. And that should hopefully tell you why you have to change the direction of the inequality whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number. 
I think this is what we tried to prove, or wanted to prove, sorry. So y is bigger than 4x. Okay, so just rearrange it now. So this then becomes 4x is less than y, and then we finally end up with y is bigger than 4x, just switching that inequality around.